Hey everyone, I'm Pat Fitzmorris of Fantasy Pros and I'm here to give you 12 potential league winners for your 2022 fantasy football season. But first, if you want a chance to win a signed Javante Williams Denver Broncos jersey, courtesy of our friends at Pristine Auction, you need to subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel right now. Comment below on this video and that's it. We will be announcing a winner right here on the channel, so make sure to turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes are up and you can claim your prize. All right, let's start our countdown at number 12. How can we not mention Christian McCaffrey? Yes, he's played just 10 games in the last two years and may indeed be more physiologically predisposed to injuries since he's only 205 pounds, but hey, the potential is massive. Over the last four years, Christian McCaffrey has averaged 22.3 fantasy points per game in half PPR formats. In full point PPR, he's even more valuable. You're playing to win your league. And yes, if CMC sustains another major injury, you're going to be in trouble. But if he stays healthy all season, he's going to be the top scoring running back in fantasy football, period. Number 11, Kyle Pitts. Last year, Pitts became the first rookie tight end in 60 years to have a thousand yard season. The last one to do it, Mike Ditka, 1961. Pitts averaged 15.1 yards per catch last year, 9.3 yards per target. Those numbers are amazing for a tight end. But you know what wasn't such an amazing number for Pitts last season? His touchdown total. He had just one. This guy was way too special an athlete for that to happen again. We're talking about a guy who scored 12 touchdowns in eight games in his final college season at Florida. So it's not exactly like he's allergic to the end zone. Also, Pitts was the only show in town for the Falcons last year. So he was often matched up against opponents' top cornerbacks. All right, number 10, Elijah Moore. There was major buzz around Moore in training camp last year when he was a rookie in 2021. The Jets took him early in the second round of the draft. A quad injury and a concussion kept him from taking flight early in the season, but over a five game stretch from week nine to week 13, he was the wide receiver two and a half point PPR scoring. He's typically being drafted as a mid-range wide receiver three this season. Yes, Zach Wilson, the Jets quarterback, is a work in progress. And the Jets drafted another wide receiver, Garrett Wilson of Ohio State, uh, somewhat early in the first round this year. But reports out of training camp suggest that Elijah Moore is going to be the number one receiver for the Jets. There's a lot of potential profit here. Number nine, let's not stop with just one Jets. Let's double up and let's go with a second because rookie running back Brees Hall has the makings of a league winner. Hall is just a terrific prospect. He's slightly below the Saquon Barkley, Jonathan Taylor tier of prospect, but man, he's a good one. Three years of big time college production at Iowa State. Then he went to the scouting combine in Indianapolis and completely lit it up there. He's got good size, great speed, catches passes, and the Jets have a pretty good offensive line even if Mekhi Becton isn't healthy. They're extremely strong up the middle with center Connor McGovern and guards Lakin Tomlinson and Elijah Vera Tucker. Hall is a better prospect than Najee Harris was last year, and he's going to be running behind a better offensive line than Harris did last year. Number eight, Kadarius Tony, another favorite of mine. Tony had just two good games as a rookie, but boy, they were really good. Six catches for 76 yards against the Saints in week four, and then 10 catches for 189 yards against the Cowboys in week five. Tony was a sight to behold in those two games. This dude is just a freaky athlete. He is springy and twitchy, and he can absolutely fly. Tony dealt with a medley of injuries last year. Hamstring, quad, ankle, shoulder, oblique, COVID-19. Honestly, I'm a little worried that he could be another Percy Harvin, potentially, who, like Tony, was a unique, outrageously athletic playmaker from the University of Florida. Harvin could never seem to stay healthy. I'm hoping that Tony has better luck in that regard because man, this dude is just magical with the ball in his hands. All right, number seven, Rashad Bateman, wide receiver, Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens have a vacancy for a number one wide out after trading away Marquise Hollywood Brown in the off season and their willingness to deal away Hollywood and not spend any draft picks at the wide receiver position suggests that they have some pretty immense confidence in Bateman, their first round pick from 2021. And boy, 
The Ravens' depth chart at wide receiver right now is really thin behind Bateman, James Prochet, Devin Duvernay, Tylen Wallace. Yuck. But this is not a depth chart thing, or at least not entirely a depth chart thing. He's a good route runner. He's terrific after the catch, excellent set of hands, and he can play inside or outside. He has positional versatility. I don't think he has any real holes in his game, and I think he has a 150 target ceiling this year. Number six, Ramondre Stevenson. So Stevenson landed in the doghouse early in his rookie year. He coughed up a fumble and lost it in his second NFL touch. But after being a healthy scratch for a few games, he did manage to work his way back into Bill Belichick's good graces. Not always easy to do. And averaged 12 carries a game over New England's last 11 regular season contests. He averaged 4.6 yards per carry and punched in five touchdowns. He was also effective in the passing game when given a chance. Not a lot of targets last year, but enough to show that he's capable in that regard. Stevenson is going to play a big role in the Patriots' ball control offense this year. Not only is he going to share early down work with Damian Harris, he might get some of the passing down work that newly retired running back James White vacates. So Stevenson is a 227 pound brute with nifty feet and good hands. Damian Harris scored 15 touchdowns for the Patriots last year. And with Stevenson's more versatile skill set, it's possible that Stevenson is the guy who scores double digit touchdowns for New England this year. All right, before we get to my top five league winners, we need to talk about our sponsor at Loop the best place to shop for football cards online. Loop is giving new users $20 off their first purchase, so you can pick up select football cards for cheap. They are also paying out special high-value bounties for hitting rare cards. Loop is free on iPhone, Android, and web browsers. It's a live streaming app with dozens of the best sports card shops from around the United States. Think Twitch, but for sports cards. Get access to the newest products from brands like Tops and Panini or shop for singles and graded cards. Loop is sports cards 24-7. Download the app now in the Apple and Google Play stores and sign up today at loop.cards slash fantasy pros because sports cards and fantasy football pair together like wings and beer. All right, now back to the list. And let's go to number five, it's Travis Etienne. James Robinson has been the Jaguars workhorse for the last couple of years, but he tore his Achilles late last season and figures to be limited at best early in the regular season. Etienne has been dominating first team preseason usage, getting a lot of snaps and carries, and more important, running a lot of routes. Etienne and Jaguars quarterback Trevor Lawrence played together at Clemson, where Etienne scored 78 Yes, 78 touchdowns in 55 career games. ETN's just an exceptional pass catching running back. He had 85 receptions and over a thousand yards in his last two college seasons. And he's really the only explosive playmaker the Jaguars have in their offense. So I wouldn't be surprised if he had 1,300 or 1,400 combined yards and double digit touchdowns this season. And yet he's being drafted as a mid range running back two in most leagues. All right, number four is Gabriel Davis. Yeah, I know. He's been everybody's fantasy darling in the offseason, but that doesn't make him any less of a potential league winner. When we last saw Davis, he was catching eight passes for 201 yards and four touchdowns in the Bills. 42 to 36 divisional round loss to the Chiefs in the playoffs. Davis is just a playmaker, man. In his two seasons in Buffalo, he has averaged 16.4 yards per catch, and he has scored touchdowns on 18.6% of his catches and 10.4% percent of his targets. He's only had 125 targets in 32 regular season games because he's played behind Emmanuel Sanders, but Davis is now a locked in starter and he is going to get a lot more snaps and a lot more targets in one of the NFL's most explosive passing attacks. Number three, friends, meet potential league winner Trey Lance. Lance is this year's version of Jalen Hurts. Hertz was one of my favorite targets in 2021 because his running ability was destined to make him a valuable fantasy asset. 
thing is Hertz is kind of expensive now. So I'm uh, pivoting to a new, less expensive model. Lance is an electric runner who averaged 12 rushing attempts in his two starts for the 49ers last season. He doesn't have a lot of NFL experience and he didn't face top college competition at North Dakota State. So no doubt Lance is gonna be occasionally flummoxed by what he sees in his first extended exposure to NFL defenses, but that's fine because what happens when a mobile young quarterback is confused by the defenses he's seeing, he's gonna tuck it away and run. And man, Lance can really run. He had 1,100 rushing yards and 14 touchdown runs for North Dakota State in 2019. Lance's passing ability is kind of a wild card, but the 49ers wouldn't have traded away their first round picks in 2022 and 2023, plus a third rounder in 2022 if they had serious doubts about Lance's arm and his processing ability. And it also helps that he's gonna be throwing to Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and George Kittle, and is gonna be running Kyle Shanahan's playbook. All right, number two is Mike Williams. Through the first five weeks of the 2021 season, Williams was the wide receiver one and a half point PPR leagues just ahead of Cooper Cup. And Williams had a beefy 25.2% target share over that stretch. He tweaked his knee in week five, unfortunately, was limited in week six, and didn't really pick up the pace again until December. But Williams is a six foot four inch Velociraptor who's averaged 16.1 yards per catch over his career and had a 10 touchdown and a nine touchdown season on his resume. Williams was among the most efficient wide receivers in the NFL last year, 15th in yards per route run and 18th in yards after the catch per reception. He plays some of the best offenses in the league, catching passes from outstanding young QB Justin Herbert, and he's going to be playing in a bunch of shootouts in the wild, wild AFC West. And finally, number one, Michael Pittman. Pittman made big strides last year in his second NFL season, 88 catches, 1,082 yards, six touchdowns. He finished wide receiver 22 in fantasy points per game and was inside the top 20 yards per route run and red zone targets. And that was all with Carson Wentz as his quarterback. Now Pittman's going to be playing with Matt Ryan, who has been fueling big seasons from wide receivers for years. Julio Jones is the most obvious one. But Roddy White had some big seasons with Ryan, and so did Calvin Ridley. And hey, the Colts don't have a very exciting group of wide receivers or tight ends aside from Pittman, so his target share this year could be massive. All right, those are my 12 potential league winners for 2022. Don't forget about our Javante Williams jersey giveaway, courtesy of our good friends at Pristine Auction. And thanks once again to our sponsor, Loop, the best place to shop for football cards online. Thanks for tuning in to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out our featured videos. And while you're at it, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Fantasy Pros, so you can get the latest news and updates to give you the edge you need in your fantasy league.